now we get into more depth, more of um, the efficiencies of the machining knowledge editor and feature-based manufacturing if we have the author license to be able to modify those. So now let's get into this demonstration. So with this part here, there are certain criteria that are within the machining knowledge database that are called just root conditions. So when NX is looking for a strategy to cut this pocket, it has to match the radius of the tool to the radius of the feature because there's no logic within NX to say up to a certain corner radius, use a certain diameter of tool. Anything more than that, use a different diameter tool. So if it can't figure out the logic, if it just cannot figure out what it's going to, how it's going to do it. So in this, we have a couple features that I've already created. We're just going to find them so we can see that NX has the logic within it to find these types of features. So they are feature types within NX. We go through the same process of grouping the features. Now we have our groups down here. Now, when I go to program these, when I go to create the feature processes, when I tell NX to go ahead and interrogate that, find the features, find the operation, find the tool, it comes against a condition that says I cannot produce a tool path. I can't find a tool that's this corner radius. And if we went to that information window that just popped up, it would say that there is, it requires a tool of X diameter, less than or equal to. There's no tool in the database that, that hits that criteria. So how do we go ahead and create operations for this? How do we teach them into the system so that they can repeat? So I have another part here where I have operations already created. So I have my feature group. I've done everything that I, I initially did where I found the feature, I interrogated the part, I I'll group the features. So now I go in and I do programming. So I program this to where this is the methodology that I would always like to use when it runs up against this type of feature. I want, to, I want to make sure that I stress this. You do not have to understand coding. You don't have to understand TCL. You don't under, have to understand even the conditions or the rules to be able to efficiently use this. All I have to do is right click, object, teach operation set. It brings in everything that this toolpath has to it. Once I start selecting on here is all my non-cutting moves, my step overs, my cut levels. So this is all the internal inner workings of the adaptive milling process. Now, if I go over here, this is the internal interface, the internal dialog. All of these are set directly to this part. So if I come in here and I look, it says that my bottom roughness is 250. So it either has no designation on it, or it has a 250 roughness finish on it. So if I were to have this exact same feature, but it was a 125 finish, this strategy would not be called. So I want you to make sure that you understand that when you teach these features, it's very specific to that feature. Now I'll go into it a little bit later on, how do I open things up so that it can, it understands that pockets of this nature with different variants can still use this strategy. So let's go through on completing this teaching. So once I've went through this and I've validated that, yes, this is what I want, I teach the rule to the system. So now if I wanna come back through here, I'll do the same with this one. If I come in here and I move these to the unused items, and I reprocess this. You'll see there's a few things different. Find, finding the features. It processes correctly. I'm going to group the features. This process never changes. But now when I go to create feature process, you're gonna see a difference. Now, when I come down through here, I have operation sets. 
I, these are specifically taught into this. You can do it from the rule based rule based drop down, or you can just go to operation set based. And this looks directly to the operations that have been taught in by the user. Me personally, I like to use this so that if you run against, so if I do a feature based manufacturing, interrogate the part, and there are other features that doesn't have knowledge for it that have been picked up. If I use the operation set drop down, then it's not going to, to program there those because there's no operation set that's associated. So I like to use rule base and have everything checked because it first goes to operation sets, then it comes up and picks up from the machine knowledge database. So if I have the operation sets checked and I hit OK to this, you're going to see that it's going to give me the exact thing that I want. Everything that I told it to put in there, it's going to put in there. But there is a big difference here. Oh, it doubled me up because I have some more info. So there's some there's some things that you have to take into consideration when you're using this. So when I told this to program that into the feature-based manufacturing, I used operations that have caveats to them. So if I tried to tell this adaptive milling operation and I taught it into the system for automation, but I used physical characteristics off of this part to teach it, like using a trim off of the part, that will not work for another part because it's looking for this entity. So the correct way to do that would be to add a trim area, come in here and create, sorry, create geometry, create a trim area, and set this trim area. What that'll do is when you create, when you teach this to the system, it'll just be a blank taut trim boundary, but you'll see it there and you'll know that you have to go in and manually select a trim. So if I were to process this just as it gave me, it would say that it has issues, but all, you, all we would have to do is give it a trim. Give it a, so it's trying to go through this. So, you have to think about how you're going to process in data into the machining knowledge database so that when you're using it on a different part other than the master part that has been taught off of, that it can either automatically pick up that data, like using a uh, first floor option for tool access, that would just select the floor instead of being a specific entity on the taught part. So you really wanna get away from using individual entities on the part to teach into the system. You have to think about it in a circular way of how is that going to affect my selections on the other part. So you can put in trim areas and even if they're not needed, it'll just be a blank setting. So you want to think about how this is actually going to be processed to the secondary parts, not just the individual parts you're working on. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.